My sisters and brothers, once again, good morning. As we approach the end of the liturgical year, as we prepare ourselves to enter prayerfully and celebrate that season of Advent coming up in just a few short weeks, our readings from scripture take on a much more apocalyptic tone. Themes such as the end of the world, the end of time, the dawning of God's kingdom are all familiar themes that recur time and again throughout the scriptures. And our reading for today from the gospel shows the Pharisees very much asking that question of Jesus. When will the kingdom of God come? The great promise, the expectation, the hoped for reign of God. And the Pharisees here tend to have a very literal understanding of what that kingdom should be. Very human expectations of a strong and mighty leader whom God will raise up to restore the people of Israel to their former political power as a nation. But Jesus and God, upending all expectations, gives a corrective. He says, we're all so good at pointing out and looking at the different signs of the times, but sometimes our expectations can blind us from the work of God already at work in our midst, in and around us. Jesus tells them the kingdom of God cannot be observed. No one will just announce, look, here it is or there it is, because the kingdom of God is among you. What does Jesus mean by this? I think one of my favorite descriptions of the kingdom or the reign of God comes from Pope Emeritus, Benedict XVI, who shortly after being elected as Pope in 2005, published the first volume of his Jesus of Nazareth series, a series that the Pope himself described as his own personal journey, his personal search for the face of the Lord. But from the outset of that project, he identifies the various temptations that Jesus faces, one of which is for earthly political power and might. But he says that the kingdom of God is not found there. The kingdom of God is not to be found in those structures or of, of power and might or reign as we might think of it, but rather the kingdom of God is best summed up as relationship with Jesus companionship with him, drawing near to him. It's one of the products of that gift of wisdom that we hear about in the first reading of the many different graces and gifts that's bestowed through wisdom. Holy, unique, agile, clear, certain, loving, keen, beneficent, and kindly gift that's given to us, but that it passes into holy souls from age to age and produces friends of God and prophets. I love that line from the Book of Wisdom this morning. She passes into holy souls from age to age, producing friends of God and prophets. That's an apt image, what Jesus, I think, is talking about, of the coming of the kingdom of God, the kingdom of God being among us. That we are drawn into that relationship with God, companionship with Jesus, and thereby with one another. You know, some people will joke that, uh, what was promised, what Jesus promises, is the kingdom, the reign of God, and what we get instead is the church. But the coming of God's reign, the dawning of God's kingdom, yes, it's realized in the church, in our relationship with the sacraments, with God's grace, God constantly calling us toward himself in love and in mercy to be sustained and nourished, but in drawing close to God, drawn together as a community. This is what Jesus talks about in the coming of the kingdom of God, the reign of God. It's relationship, closeness with Jesus, and out of that relationship with him that our own community is formed, nourished, and sustained. So how is it in these readings, and we're going to hear more of them in the days and weeks to come, this constant message of prepare yourself. We need to prepare our hearts, our minds and souls for the dawning, the coming of that kingdom. And we're just about to set on our Advent journey, our Advent pilgrimage of preparing ourselves, awaiting the coming of the Lord. Well, there are many ways that we can do this. And for our own prayer and practices, perhaps as we approach the end of the year, we can adopt some of them to prepare our hearts for the coming of God's kingdom to draw closer to the Lord. Perhaps to be more deliberate about our daily prayer practices, whether it's in reflecting or praying over the scripture passages of the day. We have these days a great sustained reading from the Book of Wisdom that we can return to, 
or a gospel contemplation of Jesus and his encounters uh, with the Pharisees or preaching, healing, and teaching. All different ways that we can go to a daily source of inspiration for our prayer. Perhaps as we approach the Advent season, we can be more deliberate, uh, more intentional about our sacramental life of the regular reception celebration of the Eucharist or the celebration of God's love and mercy in the sacrament of reconciliation. Different ways of drawing close to the love and mercy of God who wishes to nourish and sustain us on our pilgrim journey. Other ways that we can adopt here at the parish through almsgiving, perhaps, the giving tree this year, donating out of our own bounty and blessings for those more in need, those less fortunate, and the way in which, as we give alms, as we do so, that it can be a spiritual practice for us. In all these ways, we can draw closer to the Lord, prepare ourselves, our minds and our hearts, for the coming of the kingdom of God. These are all great ways to prepare ourselves, all great ways to open ourselves, to receive lavishly from the generosity and gifts of God. As we hear in the first reading today, that wisdom that is poured out, pervading all spirits, given to us by God. We need to be open to receive it. These different practices will allow us to be ready to receive even the unexpected graces, the unexpected gifts that God wishes to give us. And then that will allow us, hopefully, to draw more fully, closer to God, the realization, the dawning of that kingdom. Amen.